What's up guys, welcome back to Stoffer Garage. Today is the exterior mold mansion makeover that you guys have all been waiting for since you saw the inside get detailed. And if you haven't seen that video, I'll put it up here in the i card and in the description box below for you guys to check it out so you guys can see the full transformation this car has been under. This car had been sitting for a very long time. The outside is covered in moss and mold, especially that convertible top. It's a disaster. And if you guys are new, make sure you hit that subscribe button below, turn on notifications, so that way you guys don't miss out on any of these new videos coming out because this is what I do. We transform disaster cars and make them look like new again. So let's go ahead and roll the before shots and get started. As you guys can tell that the outside of this car needs to be completely transformed and I'm going to walk you through the process and the different steps and tools that I use to make this car look like new again. Now the first step that I'll be doing is actually using my ozone generator to get the inside of the car smelling better, any leftover mold, any bugs or anything like that, it'll actually kill it and remove that, that smell from the inside of the car. So what I'm doing is putting it in the inside of the front, running it for 30 minutes before I move it to the back of the trunk. Now for any debris that's collected on the windshield or anywhere else in the car, I'm just using compressed air to try to blow that off before I start using my wash mitts or any water. So that way it doesn't cake on there or gum up all my wash mitts with different debris that could just be easily blown off at the very beginning. Now for this detail, I will be using the three bucket method. I have one bucket specifically for washing the wheels and tires. I have another one with clean soapy water and then another one with just clean rinse water. Now for the wheels and tires, I'm using Eagle One All Wheel Cleaner. This stuff actually does a really good job of foaming on the tire and the wheel itself and letting it sit for about one to two minutes gets a lot of that initial dirt and grime off without having to use any sort of agitation. I always like to clean off the inside of the wheel wells with a pressure washer just to rinse any of that grime that's on the surface that comes off really easily. And in my case, I had spider webs, nest, and anything else in there, so I want to head it rinse those off before I use my wash mitt. For the bulk of the detail, it's actually gonna be using the pressure washer to rinse off the entire surface of film and dirt and grime and mold and whatever is on this surface off the car. So in this case, hashtag mold no more in the comments below because this car is mold no more for sure on the inside and now the outside. As I continued to go around the car with the pressure washer, it really started to give me a good idea of what needed to be corrected on this car from rust spots to door dings to scratches. By removing that top layer of film, it gave me a really good idea of the condition of the paint. The pressure washer that I use is actually an electric pressure washer, so it's not super, super high pressure. I'm still trying to maintain about three to four inches from the surface of the paint of the car when I pressure wash, specifically so that way I don't do any additional damage, but also I can make sure that I can get any of that stuff off the surface efficiently without having to do a second pass. Now when I move up to the front of the car, there is an actual plant that is growing out of the front bumper. So 
Obviously, we need to remove that before we can continue with the rest of the bumper and then moving into the engine bay to pressure wash and clean that off. Now for the engine bay, I'm being pretty aggressive with the pressure washer. I'm still trying to be mindful of the different components that you do not want to get water into, like the intake, air filter, or the distributor. But since the car is not running, I'm trying to make sure I can get all of the dirt and grime off the different components, so that way I can then work on troubleshooting it at a later time. With the amount of grime on the hood, this was a perfect opportunity to write something, so I went ahead and wrote subscribe. And if you haven't subscribed, make sure you do so below if you guys are liking the progress that this car is making. I think for me, as I was pressure washing the car, I was enjoying it more and more because you could see the car literally transforming in front of you from this dull, dirty looking thing to the actual paint being really, really good condition underneath it all. One thing to not forget is to make sure you get inside the gas cap area and then also remove your license plates and the license plate frames that are on the front and rear bumpers if you have them because underneath those you'll actually be surprised with the amount of dirt and debris that can collect underneath those. Now that the whole outside paint has been actually pressure washed it is time to now go after the convertible top which this is where majority of the moss and mold has been growing. And it actually came off pretty easily with the pressure washer. It just took a little bit extra time and at a slower pace to make sure I could get it all completely off. You will see here that there is actually a pretty decent sized tear in the convertible top. And I tried to be mindful with the amount of water that got sprayed in there. But when you actually looked inside that opening, it doesn't go to the inside of the car. It goes to that rear wheel well where it actually has a drain at the bottom. So I wasn't super concerned, but I also try to minimize it as much as possible. Now once I was done pressure washing, it was a good opportunity to wipe down the inner door frames and around the windows. With the pressure washer, you will get some sort of water inside those areas. So at this time, I just went ahead and wiped them down real quick. Now compared to where we started just pressure washing the car, the car is already completely different, which is really cool to see. And now it is time to move to the next step, which is just following your simple two bucket method wash process. Mm -hmm. 
For this car, it was a little bit difficult to wash the car completely in a shaded environment, but I highly recommend for you guys washing your cars at home, make sure you try to do it in the dusk or early morning because you wanna make sure that there is shade on the car so that way the paint doesn't dry and get any water spots. But for my case, since I'm doing paint correction later on, I wasn't overly worried with the water drying and leaving any sort of spotting. For all the lettering and emblems, I like to use these bristle brushes to get into those spots that I wouldn't be able to with my wash mitt. They do a really good job at cleaning those areas efficiently. For the convertible top, I'm just using simple green all-purpose cleaner. This is to remove any staining or any of that mold that is kind of embedded in the fibers. And then I'm using my drill brush, which is a softer bristle than I typically use on carpet to agitate and get that dirt lifted to the surface so that way it can be rinsed off. Now for the wheels, I have about seven different brushes that I can use depending on the type of rim. But for these rims, I'm just using a brush to scrub the tire itself. I have a wash mitt for the inside of the wheel well and the inner lip of that fender. And then I'm using these different brushes that actually bend and flex to get inside the wheel drum and the back of the spokes and the caliper. Now the first step in paint correction is to clay the car. Claying is actually really, really simple. You just kind of spray it with some sort of lubricant. You can use wash soap or a quick detailer like I use, and just take a small piece of clay flatten out and lightly glide it across the surface to remove any surface contaminants. You want to do this so that way any debris doesn't get embedded in your pads to cause any further scratching. Now for the polishing stage, I'm using a one-step polish compound and an orange cutting pad. And you want to start in a small surface area with your polisher on a low speed to just get the product across that panel so that way it doesn't get flung everywhere before I knock it up to a speed five or six. Now with just one pass, you can see how well the finish is turning out, how glossy and shiny it is. And then here you can actually see the left side is a little bit hazy compared to the right side, which is actually a mirror-like finish. So continue this process of claying and polishing the car all the way around before we go ahead and put on our topper wax.
One tip that I have is if you're polishing to always wear some sort of respirator because as your polish starts breaking down and cleaning up your paint, you also get some dusting. So if you're outside, it's not as big of a deal. I still recommend one, but if you're inside, definitely wear some sort of dust mask so that way you're not breathing in those particles. And then also if you're doing the side panels, definitely pull up some sort of chair to sit on because your back will definitely thank you after you're done. Now for the final step process, I'm actually using this wax from Chemical Guys. It's called Butter Wax. It's a synthetic wax that goes on really, really easily and comes off easily as well. And I've never used it on a paint that didn't make it look really, really wet and shiny, especially on even white cars. So I really like this wax as a final step, simple process compared to something a little bit more intricate. There's many different products for the convertible top that you can use, but in this case, I'm just using plain old Scotch Guard. It works really well as a UV protectant, but also as a water repellent. So I'm gonna be applying it to the entire convertible top. And in this case, I was able to just get away with using one can to do so. For the tires, I'm using 303 Tire Balm. This stuff is actually really, really nice smelling and goes on really, really easily. Enough so that I actually like to use it on trim as well. And for those harder to reach spots on the plastic trim, I'm using the same foam brushes I use for the interior as the exterior to get those spots covered with the 303 Balm. I want you guys to let me know in the comments below if you like the interior or the exterior better. I feel like these before and after shots of the exterior turned out insane. I was blown away that the paint was in such good condition after it's been sitting for so long. And once it was pressure washed off, just by doing a single stage polish and then a single coat of wax, the paint literally looks brand new. So I was super pleased with the results. If you guys like this video, make sure you give it a big thumbs up. Let me know in the comments below what video you guys wanna see next and I'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys.